Yo, what's up everybody? It's your girl Anas Vaughn. Welcome back to another video here on my channel. So in today's video, I kind of want to start like a new series here and y'all can let me know how y'all feel about it, you know, in the comments, but I personally like this. <laughs> um, learning about this kind of stuff is basically just like um, what we call celebrity love affairs, like how, you know, old Hollywood, there's a whole lot of cheating. People cheat today. I apologize. I think they have construction going on. So I apologize if y'all can hear that in the back. Well, it's going to be about celebrity love affairs. So think like old Hollywood people cheating, scandal. I like hearing about that kind of stuff. I don't know, maybe I'm messy. In today's video, I do want to touch on about the relationship of and love affair of Ingrid Bergman. Um, she was an actress. So um, I won't hold you guys up any further. Um, please don't forget to like this video if you like videos like this, or if you want to see more content like this, um, please go ahead and drop a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think about it and share it with your people if you rock with it. Um, but I won't hold you guys up any longer, so let me get into it. I got my notes right here, you know, try to be somewhat prepared. So Ingrid Bergman was born on August 29th, 1915 in Stockholm, Sweden, um, to parents Friedel and Justice Samuel Bergman. Um, they met basically while Ingrid's mother was visiting from Hamburg in Germany and she went to Sweden just to spend some time out there for the summers and then that's when she was walking through the woods one day and she would walk those woods frequently and her father Justice Samuel was actually there and so he was like in the woods they were just talking he was painting like so that's how they ended up starting their relationship so unfortunately though Ingrid wouldn't really have a whole lot of you know time to spend with her parents her mother passed away when she was um just two years old and then her father passed away 10 years after that some sources say that she was two or three or um 12 or 13 I believe it was actually going to be two and 12 and um just more sources say two and 12 than they do say three and 13 well they passed away when she was two and 12 respectively i'm sorry she ended up moving in with a relative of hers an uncle um and so that's when she went ahead and continued on with um her formal schooling um i remember reading in a source specifically they were talking about how she, her uncle was like super um you know passionate for her and was willing to help her with her dreams and accomplish her goals he was always just like a good little um cheerleader for her and i like that because especially in this time period they probably weren't so supportive of women even working let alone being you know world-renowned actresses and so on and so forth so after that she ended up going into in 1936 um she appeared in intermezzo which basically changed like the entire trajectory of her career it established her as an artist, an actress. Um, and then after that, suddenly after appearing in Intermezzo, the next year she ended up getting married to who would become her first husband, which would be Dr. Peter Lindstrom. Um, and together they welcomed a, a daughter. Her name was Pia Lindstrom. So I think that was really cute. They had their little family going. Um, and so basically, you know, at this point, At this point, as I was saying, um, it just changed the entire trajectory of her career. Um, she was just being, she was really successful at this point in time. Um, I remember reading in a source that she did have um, a play that she was in when she was 17 years old. Um, however, she didn't really have any lines, I don't believe. But at this point, when she was in Intermezzo, that's what really started her career. Um, was born May 8th, 1906 in Rome. Parents, Angela Giuseppe are Rossellini and Elettra Ballon. I hope that's not really bad, I don't know. And it's actually kind of interesting. So the same Angiolo Giuseppe Rossellini, who um, is his father, obviously, which is Roberto's father, he was actually the first one to open up by bringing cinema to Italy as well. So whenever Roberto's father opened up that big, huge cinema that he's known for, he actually gave his son unlimited access so he can go in there anytime, see whatever movie. I just thought that was really cool because I hope, like, I can do that for my kid one day, you know, like have a big old theater, like, oh yeah, just come on in. Unlimited access forever, for life. That's so, I like that. And so, you know, from that point on, Roberto just fell in love with cinematography, videography, directing. He just fell in love with the entire production of movies. After that, um, he then married um, Marcella, Marcella, I think it's Marcella, um, Marcella de Machis in 1936. And they actually ended up welcoming, welcoming their first child in 1937. Also in 1937, they ended up having Cellini made his first um, documentary. And I tried to figure out the pronunciation of this. It's French. 
I'm not French. I think it's Prelude à la Pré, Midi d'une Fon. Um, basically, it translates in English to the prelude to the afternoon of a fawn and not like a like a little cute fawn that we think of like they're talking about like mythological fawn um and that kind of fawn is like a half goat half human kind of fawn that's what he was creating a whole documentary about again at this point in time in italy th yeah, this is during world war ii time era where you know we're talking about fascism and so in 1943 the fascist regime fell obviously led by benito mussolini but it was interesting because Roberto Rossellini was actually very fond and very friendly with the son of Benito Mussolini, which is named Vittorio, um, who also ended up, you know, being successful in his own right outside of politics. He actually wasn't even involved in politics. Um, going back to the timeline, though, so whenever the fascist regime fell in 1943, Rome was liberated. It was June 4th, 1944. And so after that, that's when Rossellini started to produce movies anti-fascism movies in the regime, which was ironic considering his relationship with Vittorio Mussolini. But regardless of such, in his own right, he had came out with um, many of films, or directing many of films, and that's what got him his stardom. And so basically, when we get to the point of Roberto Rossellini and Ingrid Bergman meeting up, they are at the heights of their careers. So many sources detail the first meeting of the pair um, being on the set of Stromboli, the 1950s film. Um, however, that's actually not the case. So um, it's the case as far as them, you know, first, you know, in-person meeting, but the way their collaboration began was from a letter that Ingrid Bergman sent to the Minerva Film Company, I believe, the Minerva Film Corporation to be received by Roberto Rossellini. And then she stated exactly, Her Dear Mr. Rossellini, I saw your films Open City and Pison and enjoyed them very much. If you need a Swedish actress who speaks English very well, who has not forgotten her German, who is not very understandable in French, and who in Italian knows only the amo, I'm ready to come and make a film with you. Ingrid Bergman. I actually read um, the initial um, communication sent back from Roberto Rossellini. He actually um, received the letter on his birthday on May 8th, 1948, even though Ingrid Bergman actually sent the letter off the year prior. She sent it off in 1947, um, but he didn't receive it because it was lost in the mail at the Minerva Film Corporation in Rome. It was lost somewhere in their sort. So because of that, it was just delayed upon receiving it. But he did respond to her in a very lengthy way, um, basically outlining kind of the idea behind Stromboli and how he would be, you know, appreciative of her being a an actress and working in his film. By November of 1948, they agreed upon the terms to start Stromboli as well as starting their affair as they were both still married at the point in time. Ingrid, as I said previously, still married to Dr. Peter Lindstrom, and Roberto Rossellini was married to Marcella de Marchi. So in 1949, Ingrid was still in Italy filming Stromboli and made the decision to actually abandon her daughter and her husband to be with Roberto Rossellini in Italy permanently. She also became pregnant with their love child, which was a son that she ended up naming Roberto, presumably after, you know, his father, and so began their life in Italy. You know, she separated from Dr. Peter Lindstrom. Dr. Peter Lindstrom was a different country, and he actually, like, moved all the way to the United States just to help her and help her in her career because he had a whole established dentistry. He already had his own practice established and everything, but gave all of that up just to be with her. So she left him to be with Roberto in Italy, leaving him in the US. And I actually remember reading um, that he did pass, you know, a little bit later on. Um, he passed away in Sonoma in California. And I'm like, I feel bad. Like he stayed in the US even after like the failure of their relationship. It's back on the topic. So whenever Ingrid became pregnant, that's when they solidified their relationship. Um, Roberto ended up leaving Marcella and that's you know, what started Ingrid and Roberto. Then in 1952, Ingrid ended up um, birthing a couple more twins for him. So at this point they had three children together um, and they had two daughters, I believe. Their names are Isada and Isabella. So Isada and Isabella Rossellini. Isabella ended up becoming an actress in her own right, as did Pia, her initial, um, her child from her relationship, previous marriage that she abandoned. They actually became actresses as well. And so during this point in time, Ingrid's workload 
decreased quite a bit. I believe she probably took a little bit less or took less roles due to her children just to make sure that they were probably well taken care of because I was going through um like in my research I was finding that Ingrid just didn't really pick up a whole lot of roles that year but you know Roberto was still directing and still doing his thing out there so that's what I believe they were probably doing. It was until she went back to work, I believe, a lot more in 1954. She was in three films um, in the year of 1954. Um, movies that all that Roberto directed as well, so. And in 1956, Roberto took a trip to India for a film that he wanted to produce. I remember that he passed away before the film was completed or aired. Um, however, people ended up finding it years and years later. It was like decades later and they actually premiered it, but they actually ended up showing it a very long time later from when he was in India. And so when he did take the trip to India, he was by himself. Um, he went to go meet with a director, Haridam Dasgupta. Um, and due to his own, he didn't want to work on the film, child, I don't know, um, Dasgupta. He ended up going to be with, um, sending his wife to help out with the directing of this movie, coming out with and producing. Um, and that person's name, his wife, was then Sonali Senroy Dasgupta. And so began the affair between Dasgupta and Rosalini. They started their own affair while in India, the same way that Ingrid actually ended up getting Roberto. Roberto and Ingrid did end their relationship after eight years of marriage upon the cheating um, that Rossellini was doing. Ingrid Bergman actually passed away on her 67th birthday um, in London from complications during a procedure for her breast cancer. Roberto Rossellini ended up passing away from a heart attack at the age of 71 in Rome where he's from. I believe the way you get him is the way you lose him tenfold kind of a little bit in this story but um, I'll go ahead and try to edit this out and see how I like this and see if I upload it. But if I upload this, then I probably liked it. If not, then... But I think that's going to be it for this video, guys. If you guys like videos like this or want to give me any suggestions, please leave a comment down below. Again, like this video and subscribe for more content. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.